I love video games. Halo, Titanfall 2, Mass Effect, I've played and played them. I also love Star Wars. So I was thinking maybe I should combine the two. I mean, I played Jedi Fallen Order, but decided it was time to try a tabletop game. Now, very different to a video game. For a start, you have to build your army before you can play with it. So I decided to play Star Wars Legion. Best of every world. It's got sci-fi, it's got Star Wars, it's got minis. Now I've been a scale modeler for over 20 years. I have put together so many plastic kits and I've painted so many figures, but I've never done tabletop gaming figures. And there's a style to it, isn't there? You see it, edge highlighting, this painted in light effects. It's really different to anything I've done before. And to be honest, I don't really want to paint like that. I like the way I paint. So I thought, let's try the way I normally paint with minis and see what happens. Well, the first thing I had to do was put them together. And I used Tamiya Extra Thin Cement and Plastic Magic. And I have to say, I found out afterwards you should use super glue with this particular plastic. So every now and then an arm falls off, which is a little disconcerting. I've been mostly okay, so I'm crossing all my fingers and toes. Now my army is the Grand Army of the Republics. Clone Wars is my favourite Star Wars. Captain Rex is probably my favourite character. Here he is going together. And Ahsoka Tano is my second favourite. I'm also doing a bark speeder. I am loving playing actual characters that I know. And the first thing I did when I put them all together was just put a slight coat of white primer. I airbrushed it and I'll show you that in a minute when I do it again. And what you realise straight away is these soft plastic models have got seam lines. They come already off the sprue in just pieces. You put them together, they're really simple, but then you have to go and clean them all up. Now, normally scale model doing a diorama, three or four models. Tabletop army, this is 800 points. I'm probably gonna need to do about 50 or 60 models. And I've got about a hundred probably I'm gonna end up painting to have options. None of that is quick and it probably doesn't even show when you've got them on the table. Time for another coat of primer. This helps mask some of the scratches and also gives a really good basis for my main color, which is also white. The all on sticks, easy to do, just held by their feet. And then I sprayed the base white color for the armor. This is MS white. It's a really great Gundam color. It's just slightly off white perfect for clone armour. I also sprayed my bark. Now this is a speeder. I've got a sidecar that goes on it and I'm going to paint it in the iconic 501st colours. And then I moved into painting with a brush. Now I normally use a number two brush with a sharp point. Oh, I put it on, I cleaned it off. This is acrylic paint. I tried oil paints. I thought they'll flow a bit better into the gaps. I couldn't get it into all the thin, narrow gaps. It just wasn't working. Put it on, cleaned it up. First one down, thought I'll use enamel washes. This is what I always use. Enamel washes are great. They just flow, they're easy to clean up. They will go in every small gap and it's nice and black. So it'll be an edging. And if it's not quite dark enough, I can fill any large areas around the bottom, etc., with another paint later. And that's what I did. Every now and then it kind of ran a bit into cracks. I didn't want it, but you can clean it up afterwards with just simple white spirit. And of course it worked perfectly doing panel lines. This is an enamel wash for panel lining. Tamiya worked perfectly on the bark speeder. I used odorless white spirit, sans soda is one version of that, to clean up any excess on the armor. Really, really easy to do if you do it quite quickly after it's dried. The longer you leave it, the harder it gets but it does come up looking really good because these are animated characters. So they have quite defined lines. Add a little bit more enamel washes and then used oil paints to try and fill the gaps. And you can see I've gone to a zero zero brush instead. So much easier. It doesn't hold a lot of paints. So if you're gonna paint out a big gun, it takes time. And these are oil paints because they go over enamels really well. They're the same sort of solvent range 
Um, you can use white spirit and terps and it will all just work. So I used a mix of enamel washes and oil paints at the same time and they didn't fight each other. And then I decided, you know what I always do? An oil wash. Takes two or three days to dry so it isn't quick, but it is a beautiful wash. Now I'm not using black for these, I'm using Starship Filth, just because I love the name of the colour, and it's a dark grey. Thinned it down with loads and loads of white spirit, I actually have a huge bottle of it mixed up already, and just brushed it everywhere and left them on the side to dry for a week. But this is a problem, isn't it? As a scale modeler, I used to model at weekends and I'd leave things on the side, I'd time it so my washes had time to dry. But this just takes a long time and I have a lot to do. And when it was done, I matte varnished over the top just to seal it in and to give the acrylic paints I'm gonna use next something to just stick on to really. And I'm using white acrylic by Vallejo, just number one, white, and I'm tidying up my washes. I'd actually put two on, I came back and did a second one, which is why it took a week to dry. And I just felt they looked too dirty. This is my rookie squad. The rookies are in the Wishy Moon episode and they're called shinies because they have white, shiny, clean armor. They're brand new clones. And you can see what a difference adding white over the top compared to the wash makes. They start to look like they're factory fresh. And I still needed to go over and touch up some of my oil paints because they just were a bit thin and they sat nicely in the cracks. Went over those with enamel washes. It's all taking layers and layers. Not to mention the fact Echo needed his handprint from Captain Rex and the 501st, this is Rex, they all need complex markings. If I'm gonna have to do a whole army of this, I may have to think about some shortcuts because this is taking a long time. And for hero characters like Captain Rex here, it's worth putting every single tally mark on his armor. But for whole squads, it's gonna take a long time. And I found my acrylic paint was coming off. Hmm. And then I had the decision, how much do I embrace painting in wrinkles in the fabric or shadows? Now, as a scale modeler, I use my lighting to do that. But the whole point of tabletop minis is sometimes they're sat on a table with bad lighting and you want them to stand out, hence edge highlighting. Now I put on some quite bright highlights and I didn't like them. So I just took them all back off again, really. And by the end, it went back to more or less the black gray I'd used as the base coat. I've not quite embraced this whole tabletop mini aesthetic yet, have I? Still, I've about a hundred to go, so maybe I'll get there. And you know, I'm still not quite happy. It doesn't look very clean. I, I'm just, hmm, I don't think I've quite got the skill set yet. And this is only my first one. I tried a subtle bit of highlighting to bring those guns to life and then distracted myself by watching the Clone Wars again, certain episodes for research to see what exactly the colors were on a phase one 501st armor. I painted Hard Case, Jesse and Kicks from the Seleucami Deserter episode. So they're going to go on grass bases and then did the rest of the squad made up with 501st type markings. I have to remember which ones are which and write the names underneath because already I'm going, is that kicks or is that hard case? And eventually I moved on to the mark, which at least is a little easier to paint. A couple of coats of blue and some black gray details and I'm ready to weather. I always weather with oils and I was in two minds whether this time I should just do acrylics for speed or do the oils. And in the end, I went with the oils because I do like the way they look and these 501st as phase ones have a slightly lighter coloration than the phase twos, which is why Captain Rex in this looks darker than the other squad that I've done. They just didn't have as many markings. And you can see the markings increase in number as they go through. So depending where they are in the Clone Wars depends whether you have all white squads like my shinies or the 501st who are starting to put their markings on. But as you can see here, oil paints do give nice weathering and then gave them a matte varnish just to keep that paint on and I was done. But that's not quite it because every good clone trooper needs a good base. This is a game after all, the bases are an integral part of it. And although it annoys me that I have to put them on bases because I then can't use them on dioramas, actually it's a great opportunity to do some great terrain. 
and that's what I'm going to do in some future videos. But these are the Rishi Moon bases and the Seleucamide bases. I did have to use super glue and zapper to get these stuck down onto the bouncy grass, but I think I eventually got there. And now I really am finished. My first two squads painted and based. Wow, I'm actually quite proud. They did take a long time, but that's actually part of the joy. It's a hobby where I'd spend so much time rushing for YouTube. Actually spending afternoons just painting little men is very therapeutic. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, subscribe, hit the bell button so you know when I put a video up in future. Perhaps consider supporting me on Patreon as a YouTube channel member. You know the drill. But otherwise, come back next time and let's look at those terrain bases.